Morning, Peter. How are you today? Cold? Yeah. Well, good. We got some mail this morning. Oh, telephone bill. Marvellous. Just what I need. Thanks. I always wanted one of these flats. So I could look out the window. Excuse me. <coughs> and onto the river. Because I absolutely adore water. Um, until I became disabled, I was a keen sailor. And I have to look at water. Besides which, the river kept me sane. Watching people in the river go by when you're stuck and you can't move. Beats looking at four walls. So, an uh, opportunity came up in '96 then to move from number 23 to here. After the death of its previous uh, tenant, Mrs. MacIver, so I jumped at it. At least here I get some light, you know, because the windows are big and I've got, I can see sky, and you need to be able to see sky. There's movement. You know, the whole world is happening outside there. There's life. I need, I need some of that because I can't do it anymore. I need to be able to watch people do it. There's a community in here, like people are being born in here. And Mrs. MacIver died in here. Or she didn't die right here, I hope, because this is my bed. But I mean, she died in these buildings. You know, so there's the real cycle of life is there. That's why we're part of the community. Peter works for an agency and he's appointed, paid for by the Eastern Health Board because he's me, kind of, not a personal assistant, and he's more than just a carer, like he's become a friend as well. But uh, he does my shop and does my cleaning of me toilet and all that sort of stuff for me. I've been lucky with me carers. The previous carer was a Nigerian guy and he was with me for the best part of a year. It's called a idiopathic peripheral neuropathy. Now, all that is is fancy words describing what it is. Idiopathic, as my consultant explains, is doctor speak for we don't know. I mean, I let all doctors that want to practice or test any kind of theories and stuff on, on me go for it because I don't really think I have anything to lose. But again, a lot better than being dead. I spent five months in Beaumont and people said, God, you're awful, you're good, you know, do you not get upset about it? And when you see people dying, people who give up, there's a lot worse things in life than being crippled and being dead, I think, although it's not in life, is a damn sight worse than being in this condition. At least I can hope. I think people, when they walk past and they see the flats there, they're kind of like, God, who lives there? Or I wonder... I wonder what it's like, you know, to have a flat like that. It's a really good community and, like, just the mixture of culture in the, in the flats. And, you know, you've got the original tenants next to writer with three kids or whatever. You've got everybody living together and everybody's talking to each other. Everybody's saying hello. Everybody knows the kids' names. The kids know everybody. And, like, that's, that's the kind of community you want everybody to live in. I think a lot of people come down this street and I think a lot of people, you know, who want to stroll down alleyways and discover what's down an alleyway love discovering these flats. People walk past and they, they think it looks really nice place to live and they're kind of like, oh, look, at, look in there, that's really idyllic or that looks like a little village or I don't know what they think. What, what they think. I know what I think when I walk past. It's not a designer building and it's not a modern building. It just looks like people living in the middle of the city. But I think you're, I th I think you're talking about the soul of a place, the spirit of a place, and I think this building has a spirit in it. Temple Bar thing. I mean, obviously, you know, it's what it's turned into, what it's supposed to be. But they're trying to push the kind of cultural activity again, and that's the balance too, between turning into a, a strip of bars and whether it actually, you know, because originally it was more cultural. A cultural, because I used to in pub city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The door. I used to run a restaurant in Temple Bar, one of the first ones in the kind of late eighties, called Blazes, and um, the, like Temple Bar was just 
you know, there was a Temple Bar pub, which was basically Guinness and Bass, you know, on tap and a little fire. And then there was loads of artist studios originally. Then it changed into this thing. So I think now it has to, you know, find the balance between that and its pubs, you know. So I've been here about four, four years now. Yeah, just over four years. Yeah. Um, and it's great. I mean, it is. It's like city centre. It's ideal. Like, I mean, I mean, for the first two years, I had to pinch myself. I just thought I was amazed. It's like an oasis in the middle of this whole friggin' horrible materialistic culture that we're 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 surrounded in. This idea of in Ireland, you have to own your property. They have the whole thing of you know make as much money as you possibly can all the time. It doesn't all have to be destroyed about you know trying to own things. You know, like I mean, this is good. It's nice rent. It's controlled rent. It's a bit like a civilized place, like everywhere else, people are paying through the nose, like across the way there, I think they're paying like a grand for boxes, they're even smaller than here, you know? I think part of the kind of attractive thing about Crampton Buildings is the courtyard, and even though it can get messy and all this kind of stuff, it's kind of, it is that open space, just that, that square, I mean, you know, people look in, it's kind of, it's nice, not, it's not closed off like everything else kind of around there, you know, where everything's kind of like a siege, like a fort, this is quite open. You know, and that's what, I mean, it, it, in terms of aesthetic beauty, architecture, I think it's quite nice that you can see, you know, the houses and the, um, all that, you know, the balconies especially, I mean, it looks great. I mean, it's like somewhere like New Orleans, those things. It's, 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 it's energizing to walk into, as opposed to walk into something, you know, that's just closed off from the world, you know? And that's why I think Crampton Buildings is unique, because I think it does look, it is kind of, it is unusual, you know, around here. I've got friends, you know, they say, where do you live? And I say, Temple Bar, and they look at you and go, oh, wow, you must be, you know, how do you afford an apartment down there, you know? And then I tell them where I live, and they go, oh, that little building, the red brick building, I'd love to live in that. I'd, I always, every time I walk by there, I would always love to live in that. Any chance of getting me a flat in there? And I go, not in a million years, join the queue, you know? People that have this romantic, you know, idea when they walk by Tampa Bar and they see this, oh, isn't that place lovely? And that's what it's about. We don't want to lose that. It's unusual in that sense of the building and where it's, where it's located, that you have people actually living in Tampa Bar that didn't pay 350,000 for an apartment. Like, this is trendy Tampa Bar, loads of kids, loads of money knocking around, and then you, you come around the corner to Crampton Buildings and you're stepping back just that little bit, you know, you're going back 20 years, or 25 years, or whatever, maybe, to a different Dublin. And, you know, I hope we don't lose that. I hope, you know, we will eventually when these people, you know, you know, die or whatever it may be, move out or, what, or whatever happens. I think I, I see every tourist that comes into Dublin, because they all walk up the strip, as I call it. There's something like 28 pubs in Temple Bar. 28 pubs within a half a mile of one another. They're on top of one another. They gave out licenses to restaurants, bars, and, and this was supposed to be the cultural capital of Ireland. There's not one shop that's selling Irish goods in Temple Bar. You know, it's all gimmicky and stuff like that. You see, this is what happened with Temple Bar. They didn't think what they were doing. I mean, Temple Bar, it's, it's piss up land, you know? It's, 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 you know, the stag parties, and I see them. I have great fun looking out my window at night sometimes. They start of, Especially on a Saturday, they start at 12 o'clock in, 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 in the afternoon. My father was a docker. And to be closer to town, we moved in here. That's how I, I came to live in Crampton Billings. And I, I think I was about, oh, it could have been about six, I think, when, when I moved in here. And then throughout the, the years, you know, I got married, moved out actually moved back in again. And I moved back into this, which is 21, which after a couple of years, my mum uh, moved down here. And we kind of like, we, we were kind of raised in here as, as, as kids. My father died from this flat. And I moved into this flat and it was burnt to a cinder. So this is the flat as it is, three years on or four years on. Just so happens, it was the flat that, that I grew up in as a kid. You know, and I always remember when my father died, uh, he died uh, around about, I think it was one o'clock or something like that, two o'clock in the morning. And the knock came to the door, and it was a policeman because they have to tell you that your dad dies. And uh, I opened the door and I said, yeah, he's dead, isn't he? And he says, I can't tell you that. He says, you've got to ring the hospital, you know? 
that is one memory I always have. And sometimes when I'm going out and I, go, I open the door, it just jumps back at me. And uh, I wouldn't live anywhere else. I, will, I wouldn't live anywhere else now. You know, I gave up two flats and I'm never giving it up again. <laughs> I don't care for <laughs> anything, you know, because this is my home now. Yeah, I've got some good memories of the people that used to live here that are dead now. Um, some nice people, you know, some very nice people. Uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a magic about the buildings in that way, that people are here and then they go and some new people come in. Uh, but yet the buildings just remain stationary, do you know what I mean? In that kind of a way. There, there is an aura, definitely, about, about the building itself. Uh, I suppose that happens anywhere in old buildings. But yeah, you can feel it and you can see it. I wouldn't sit there all day looking out the window, but uh, yeah, I'm lucky I have a view, you know, over the river, it's, it's nice. I've seen people jumping into the river to try and kill themselves, you know? And I've rung up on the telephone, got the police out, and they've been fished out. And none of them, they've all managed to get out alive, the ones I've seen. I've seen about three or four over the years. Just, the last one was a, a girl. She just slid over the wall, just let herself slide over, down. But she was lucky, she was near the steps. And I think she got a shock or something. And she hung on to the, to the ladder until uh, the fire brigade came, they came out and they got her out, but uh, that's something you don't forget, you know. Yeah. I like nature and anything that goes with it. We'll be out feeding the birds and whatever. Sometimes you find uh, birds out there, broken wings and stuff like that, or the cat might have got them and, and stuff, and the kids would bring them in. Uh, and I'd keep them for the week and then let them go, and they come back for a few weeks and stuff like that. I think, I think I enjoy them so much because it's the city centre. People enjoy what they don't have, you know, so I really appreciate, appreciate them coming in and stuff, you know. I think it's working well out there with the few trees there, I really do, you know. There's a little ecosystem working out there, plus it's, they give us fresh air, don't they, you know. People, I suppose, living here don't have a lot of good things to say about the restaurants because of the fans at night, the noise of breaking bottles, people hanging around in the back having cigarettes, so that's not much really. But I wouldn't like to see any more restaurants being, being put in downstairs because the way the fumes are piped into our courtyard where, where people have their washing for example, and where we live, we're supposed to breathe that in, you know. Uh, there's, de there's something wrong with it. Plus, I don't think there should be restaurants underneath flats. And I don't know how they got away with that one, but they have. But besides that, people need restaurants. They need to eat, they come into town to do it, you know. So, you have to, you have to kind of go halfway and say, well, they're there, but no more, please, you know. There used to be one time no trees or anything in the, in the square. You wouldn't know that, no, there was no restaurants either. Not the way it is now. And the kids were well able to play, so they were, and play football and play matches. And 
We used to have our swings and that when we were kids. You know, it was a grand, grand old place, but it still is. Still is a grand old place. I got married out of here and all. So did my sister. I was fifth generation here. There's a good lot left in me. A good lot died, so I'll be good to them. Oh. Now all the residents that came in here, they, they, they had to say, that they read, they don't hate. You wouldn't be stuck. You know, they like the old generation that was here years and years ago. They like the old crowd that started coming back when they were young. Now you see, reinstatement. And then time to come where they get married and whatever. I'd be looking up so I will be. And <laughs> Crampton Builders will be still here. Ah, yeah. I made family in Alban, at home. And Jonathan, he had his, his family barn up there. I think Mummy's gone out. Not too long ago, a few months only, the, the baby is. Okay. Shoes off, sweetheart. Okay. So she doesn't need to because hers fell off. All right, sweetie. You can take your coat off. Take a coat off. I think like a lot of people in my generation, we're aware that our own childhood was, was, was kind of harassed and there was a lot of fear around and anxiety. And I think we're the first generation that, that really understands that how we turn out as adults is dependent on how we were brought up as children. So. What's giving us, I think, great pleasure is, is bringing, is not, not over-focusing on the kids, not spoiling the kids, not making them the absolute centre. We still have our lives. I still have my interests. Christine has her interests. But their needs still come first in these first, first few years. This is the one you like, isn't it? The toothpaste you like? Is it? Yeah. Come on, the orange one. You try it? Two. But you like the other one? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you liked this one. You don't like that one? No? That's lovely, the taste of orange. Daddy, look at my colouring around this. That's fabulous. That's really fabulous. It's beautiful. That's one of my things for Hannah Jane. Is that for Hannah Jane as well? I lived in Temple Bar, and when the whole Temple Bar thing happened, um, the landlord wanted to sell it. And so he turfed us all out and I went to Portugal, but my sister came to live here. And um, when I came back from Portugal, then I took over her flat. So there's been a kind of a family connection for all of 11 years at this stage, which is not very long in the life of Crampton Buildings. Leisha was born here and that's going to always be a, a connection, like an umbilical cord for us to hear, you know. We visit Jonathan and Christine and the kids because of the, their age, and it's a really special bond. But it's, um, we, we don't call into all the other people as much, you know, anymore. So that's something that you miss, you know? Apart from all the ongoing problems, the living next door to restaurants and Temple Bar, you know, all the noise and bad behavior and late night busking, oh, all that stuff. It's funny seeing tourists taking photographs of all the bars around here, which used to be delightful, famous pubs. One or two even mentioned in James Joyce's Dubliners. And now, I mean, locals wouldn't go anywhere near because they're not real anymore. So for me, Crampton Buildings is an oasis in this madness. And when Temple Bar eventually either calms down or goes away, these flats will still be here. I really wanted to leave at one point when Temple Bar was being developed. At first it was amusing and we enjoyed it. and It was nice to be able to get a decent coffee, but it's so out of hand now that the atmosphere out, out there is, to be honest, it's, it's, it's bad. It's a bad app. It's a bad vibe out there, and I really wanted to leave, and it was too expensive and everything else. But I have to admit, with the, with the children being born in here, it, it does make a difference. And having been there when they were born, this is really their home, and um, you know, we've taken photographs of the place, and this, the flats have a great history, and we know half the neighbours well. So, that's their history now. 
No, I, I have a feeling they'll always be able to come back here. Even if we don't hang on to this flat, they'll be able to say I was born in that flat. But I know Christine really wants to hang on to this flat, come what may. So that they, or one of them, or some of them, you know, they could live here. Because I think things will get better around here. I think this boom will calm down. And I think this, Dublin will be a, a really nice place to live again in a few years. But at the minute, at the minute maybe it's not so great. I, I want you to go and live in Italy, because I, I like the, the way of life there. But it's a language problem. So, I think it's about being happy where you are and making the best of it. Father 